now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over Live. It's National Catholic Schools and School Choice Week. So what better time to discuss Catholic education and discuss school choice? We'll also examine the controversial Common Core standards you've been hearing so much about. Joining me to discuss all of this, the Executive Vice President of the National Catholic Education Association, Patrick Lofton, and the President of the Cardinal Newman Society, Patrick Riley. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I want to start with this emphasis of Catholic education. What is the great challenge that Catholic schools are facing now and the great hope you see on the horizon? I think one of the greatest challenges we're facing right now is accessibility. Mm -hmm. uh, that more and more families are finding it very difficult to be able to pay for mm -hmm. a Catholic education K-12 uh, or K-16. Um, yeah. And we really have to find ways uh, to make Catholic education affordable and accessible to all who desire it. Mm -hmm. And this, this choice movement is gaining steam all over the country. I mean, we now have 21 states who offer vouchers, 17 offer tax credits. Mm -hmm. This seems to be, in the Catholic mind, returning the power of education back to parents where it belongs. Yeah, I think as long as Catholic families have uh, greater opportunities to attend Catholic schools, our Catholic schools are the best in the nation, mm -hmm. uh, best graduation rates, best test scores, and so uh, as long as our families have those opportunities to go, uh, they, they ought to have the same opportunities that anyone else does. I want to play a little clip for you. This is Speaker of the House John Boehner from an event this week at the Capitol. Uh, Patrick was there. Uh, he was emotionally charged as he celebrated Catholic schools and urged school choice. Listen. I've got 11 brothers and sisters and I worked at my dad's bar. But my parents sent all 12 of us uh, to Catholic schools. I don't know how they did it, but I owe everything to them for that opportunity. Listen, when I got here in 1991, uh, I wanted to help make sure that every student had the same chance that I did to go to a good school. Because education is the great equalizer. Is there a danger? by holding up this ideal of the parochial school as the cure-all for our educational problems across the country, there is a capacity problem with these Catholic schools. They can't take everybody. They can't. Um, and, and I don't know that every Catholic school is equipped to deal with all of the issues that, that young children have today. Mm -hmm. um, but Particularly I think in some of these distressed in some of the, communities. In some of the distressed communities, the urban centers uh, around the, the United States. Uh, but the reality is the Catholic church has a long, rich history of serving the underserved and working with the poor and the marginalized. And it, as Senator Boehner pointed out, I mean, it is a ticket, you know, it is an opportunity mm -hmm. for young people to escape poverty by receiving a, an exceptional education that Catholic schools provide. Pat Riley, is there an advantage to these Catholic schools not being part of the federal system, not accepting or, or, or getting any federal funds and therefore strings attached? Uh, well, certainly the strings attached are something we have to be very concerned about. We've seen all the religious liberty concerns that we have today, so obviously we have to be very careful about that. But there is, there, there is a right for Catholic families to have the same opportunities for education. My biggest concern is that Catholic schools not be, the mission of Catholic schools not be equated with public schools. They're not intended to be that. They do a better job because they're Catholic. And as long as we continue that, uh, others should be quite welcome to attend the schools and take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. I want to talk for a moment about something I know from my email correspondence and the, and the Twitter account that people are very concerned about these common core standards they hear about. There's been a lot of reporting on both sides of this pro and con. Uh, t speak to me for a moment about what common core is. What does it seek to do? Some say this is a federal takeover of local education. Others say these are just standards. I want each of you to sound off. <laughs> um, I, you know, I would say that I believe that they are, they are a baseline set of standards mm -hmm. that we're trying, that, that are being implemented uh, across the country so there's consistency from state to state. Um, as baseline standards, our Catholic schools consistently exceed standards. And, and the reality is, is that Catholic schools across this country have always been based on some type of state or national standard. Mm -hmm. um, and 
the reality is we've always exceeded. We have exceptional academic achievement in our Catholic schools. And some would argue, well, why do we need to change the standards? But uh, as I was talking with Patrick before the show began, you know, we are seeing, you know, in some states where voucher money is tied to state tests. Uh -huh. uh, I came from the Archdiocese of Milwaukee before coming to NCEA, and students in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee who are part of the Milwaukee Parental Choice Program were required to take the state-mandated tests in addition to the tests that the Archdiocese offered, which were completely different tests. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have some challenges on that front, but they're, they're baseline standards, and the reality is, is that our schools consistently exceed any standards that are set. So, Pat Riley, what's the problem with these Common Core standards? All they're saying is we're going to prepare kids for, for, for entry-level college courses and, uh, or, or VOTEC training. Right. Well, there have been myriad concerns raised about the Common Core standards. I think some of them are hyperbole. I think some of them are quite accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do have concerns about the standards themselves. But the bigger issue is what is the core of Catholic education? And that's why we launched a program called Catholic is Our Core. And and the whole point is, is not specifically the Common Core standards themselves, but that Catholic schools maintain Catholic identity as their core. Mm -hmm. If they're going to look at other standards, that's perfectly fine. However, the key standard for Catholic schools ought to be providing a very good Catholic education that teaches and forms young people in the faith. And as long as we're doing that, mm -hmm. then uh, you know I think in some ways doing that will conflict with some of the Common mm -hmm. Core standards. Others may disagree with that, but ultimately that has to be the core of our Catholic schools. When Catholic schools are, are outperforming the public schools and you've got all these children and parents wanting to send their children to Catholic school, why adopt a federal standard that has failed in the past? Why is it needed? Um, that's a good question. And, you know, I, in some ways this has become a very political issue. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result of the politics that are involved, I, I think, you know, there are a lot of misperceptions and mis mm -hmm. miscommunication about what these are. Um, I would just say that you know we need to do better education with our with our families and mm -hmm. with our teachers and principals about what these standards are and are not. Um, you know the the reality is is the the winds of change around educational mm -hmm. issues. Uh, change and oftentimes they're, they're tied to political you know winds of change whether mm -hmm. it's you know Republicans or Democrats being in, in control. Well, I, I'm not interested in that uh, story. I'm, I'm more interested in the dioceses that have adopt, adopted right. this. And we've got a hundred of the 195 dioceses that have taken this on. Some have after accepting it rejected these these standards. Why? And and why are we seeing this even among the bishops? I spoke to some of them at the bishops conference. They have right. deep reservations about this. Not all of them but a handful of them. Well, again, I think the reservations are centered on the distraction from the primary mission of Catholic education. And, and, and but that Pat, has but, to be the but primary. Pat, uh, 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 Patrick raises a good point. These kids have to compete also on these standardized tests well, when they want to get into college or when they want to get money for their voucher. Well, they do. But I, you know, I actually had heard of uh, there's a diocese that doesn't have many Catholic high schools. Mm -hmm. And so they, they decided to implement the Common Core in the grade schools so that the students are prepared to go on to the public high schools schools. I mean, that's not what our job is as Catholic educators, to prepare for public education. Uh, the education department at the USCCB, the Bishops Conference, mm -hmm. uh, specifically said that the Common Core standards were designed for public schools. They're intended for public schools. And so, uh, you know, they they can be a an, an dangerous distraction, I think, from the Catholic identity of the schools. And that has to be, we have to focus on building on the strength of our schools, which is Catholic identity, which is a classical style of education, and that's what we should be focusing Patrick on. Patrick Lofton, you have a, an adapt, adaptation of these Common Core standards that you, you are trying to uh, extend to the dioceses, yes? Tell us about that initiative. Well, it's a, it's a partnership with Catholic higher education okay. uh, to really uh, integrate Catholic teaching, Catholic values, uh, Catholic doctrine mm -hmm. across the curriculum. Um, and, and I just, you know, I want to respond to, to Patrick's comments that um, I don't think there's any Catholic school in the United States of America that would ever jeopardize its faith and the faith formation of children for a standard. Mm -hmm. That our Catholic schools are rooted in, in the fact that ultimately we are preparing children to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ and to become faithful members of our church. Mm -hmm. And in that process, they, they achieve, they they, they receive a wonderful academic experience and, and preparation for life. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but the reality is, is that you know we have to we have to be very cognizant that as we teach all subjects in our schools, mm -hmm. that we have to integrate faith. That that's the, the, one of the beauties of Catholic schools is the ability for us to talk openly about God and openly about the Catholic faith in all subjects. There there have been concerns raised that the NCAEA. Uh, has been the recipient of dollars from the Gates Foundation, $100,000 grant in 2013. Mm -hmm. Are you all still receiving money from the Gates Foundation to, to we are create not. this curriculum? We are not. No. Um, okay. And if I can just comment on that. Yeah. Um, you know, a, as a professional membership association, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, we are charged with sharing with our members the most recent trends in educational curriculum instruction, et cetera. And, you know, as a, a professional membership association, that's what we try to do with Common Core. Uh, contrary to what people believe, we, were not, we are not lobbying mm -hmm. on one side or the other. We are trying to provide information about all options to our members. And the reality is about 100 dioceses have adopted or right. adapted Common Core, while others have chosen not to. Mm -hmm. The reality is we have, as members, approximately 85 to 90 percent of the Catholic grade schools and high schools in this country. i got to let Patrick Riley get in on this. You want, you want to say something? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think that's great. Um, I, I do think that there's definitely a perception with, with some reason that the NCEA has been rather favorable toward the Common Core standards and has not been very open about many of the criticisms that have been raised about the Common Core standards and that's really ultimately I think that's I think your point earlier was very good that what's what's necessary now and probably was necessary months ago is for parents and educators to be better educated about what the Common Core standards are um, as far as the trust in Catholic schools um, you know, I think so much good has been happening in Catholic schools in terms of Catholic identity and I think Catholic families really ought to be looking very carefully at, at what's happening in Catholic schools however I do think we also have to be frank about the experience of Catholic families over the past few decades more in higher education some of the colleges and universities that you're working with uh, their Catholic identity is highly suspect and then even in Catholic elementary and secondary education, there have been a lot of problems. So Catholic mm -hmm. families are somewhat distrustful mm -hmm. of the ability of Catholic schools to maintain strong Catholic standards, even while accepting uh, these national standards. Before I let you go, there is a move afoot nationally to have universal pre-K mm -hmm. uh, brought even to Catholic schools. I know of one major archdiocese, which frankly I was stunned to read. Uh, a letter sent to priests who are overseeing the schools and the parishes. And in it, uh, it said, look, we are instituting universal pre-K in this diocese. We're not to teach explicitly about Jesus. It's part of a religion, general religious curriculum. Religious insignias we're removing from the walls. This is really problematic. And when people see that, they want to rip their hair out because it seems the Catholic schools are, are, are willing to shake off their identity for public dollars, a problem? I think it can be a problem. Um, I, I think it's all, it's how it's managed uh, from a diocesan and a school school based level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we do not want to trade our Catholic identity for money. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think I don't think any of us want to see a sacrifice the strength of our faith mm -hmm. for federal funding or state funding. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have to think about what is our call as Catholic schools to serve the, the poor and the marginalized. Mm -hmm. And without those dollars, how do, how do poor and marginalized students access Catholic education? Well, I think the point is they should have access they to it, should have but access. not with strings attached where you have to change right. the core and the mission of the thing that they're drawn to and the parents want them to be a part of in the first place. Well, right. The, the mission, ultimately, if you read the Catholic Church documents on Catholic education, the mission ultimately is Christian formation mm -hmm. in Catholic schools. And as long as that's the priority, fine. Uh, in the instances that you're talking about, Christian formation has been t totally wiped out of the program. Mm. And so, you know, you'd have to ask, is this really something? something that Catholic schools should be doing or should it be left to other social programs, other government programs that could do it mm -hmm. perhaps better and in the way that the government wants it done. Patrick Lofton, Patrick Riley. Thank, thank you. you both for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you.